What is up there everybody, Citrus Aviation here with yet another video and today we have the Aviation News This Week episode for you today and we're going to get started here with some pictures submitted by you guys. If you want to submit a picture for next week's episode, comment, well don't don't just comment, but uh, send an email to aviationnewstoday8 at gmail.com down below, uh, email links in the description, send me an email. Send me the pictures you want to submit. I will screen them. And then, uh, yeah, you'll find out if you make the pictures or not. But there are a couple pictures I want to sell from a fellow aviation spotter, Aviation24. He didn't ask, even ask me if I wanted a picture. He just sent them to me and he subscribed to the channel. So thank you so very much. Um, anyway, he has uh, some pictures and I want to sell them to you. So this first one here is taken at uh, Long Island Islip. Uh, municipal airport. Uh, it's called Ch -ch 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 Islip MacArthur Airport and it is the Long Island Airport. So if you're not familiar with this airport, it's located on the east end of Long Island in New York. So you know New York City and such is mostly on the uh, southwest side of Long Island. Well this is on the other end of that island. Anyway, uh, Southwest just resumed the service and uh, they used uh, this aircraft and uh, this guy here, AV24, got that aircraft. Really cool. Uh, they, there isn't much commercial service there right now. Uh, currently, it's three times daily Southwest from Baltimore and once daily flight on American to Philadelphia. Anyway, cool picture, so thank you for submitting that one. And also, he sent in uh, this one here of a KLM 777-300ER at JFK. Uh, this image was taken on uh, August 31st, 2020 at 8.24 p.m. This is in the special uh, Netherlands livery. This is the uh, Orange Pride aircraft. It's a really cool aircraft is to celebrate the uh, Olympic team. I believe it's the 2016 uh, Netherlands Olympic team. It's really cool. And yeah, cool. So thank you so for sending that picture in. He also sent a few others here. Here's a Frontier. Uh, A320, all, also at Islip MacArthur Airport. This was taken on August 31st, 2020. So Frontier does fly in every so often. It's not regular service, but they do fly in. I believe it's to Philadelphia um, and maybe Orlando. But anyway, nice picture there too. And uh, let's see, he also sent one of an A351000 at JFK. So here is that image right here. And uh, yeah, really cool to see the A351000 fly in uh, to JFK. And uh, did he send in another one? Yes, he did. Uh, here is a China Southern 787. So this picture was taken back in May, 7879. I assume this is JFK as well. Uh, yeah, anyway, great start, so thank you for sending those in. Again, if you want to send in your picture, email me at aviationnewstoday8 at gmail.com with your photos. I'd love to check them out and uh, maybe put them in the episode. So for headline news, we got some interesting things that happened here. Uh, first off here we have a picture of November 423 Alpha X-ray. Jeff photos. Um, this is a picture of an Omani AR Boeing 767. Uh, this aircraft crashed on October 29, 2020 uh, in Romania in Bucharest. And uh, this aircraft crashed because of a failed port side main gear. The, the gear just failed and uh, the aircraft crashed as a result. Um, it was a fairly not that bad looking of a crash. He also had some other pictures of this too. I might show those on the screen as well. But it did not look to be too bad. Uh, it looks like mostly damage to the undercarriage, uh, the number one engine, and some of the underside fuselage. I do think this aircraft could actually be repaired and brought back to service. Omani Air does like to operate a lot of really old aircraft. In fact, I don't think I've ever covered them before on this show. Um, but yeah, they're kind of an interesting charter airline. They operate really old aircraft and they operate the 767. I think they have a couple 75s and not too long ago they had a DC-10 as well. So, very interesting airline. Um, fortunately, this incident didn't cost any lives, which is good. But uh, even still, this could end up being an aircraft that gets written off. The other major headline news is that um, LO operated their very first flight to the United Arab Emirates. So thanks to the new peace agreement that was brokered by President of the United States, Donald J. Trump, between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, 
they reached a historic peace agreement that would allow travel between the two countries as well as trade relations. Uh, also as part of this deal, Saudi Arabia for the first time in history would allow Israeli aircraft to fly in their airspace. This is a huge momentous occasion. This aircraft shown here, which is registered as Fort X-ray Death Echo Hotel Delta, was the very first flight was the very first aircraft to fly between Tel Aviv and Abu Dhabi. I believe that was the route that they start with. And uh, this aircraft is a 737-900, specifically a 737-958ER. And you can see on the cockpit there's some special writing. So it says the word peace in Arabic up top, English in the middle, and Hebrew on the bottom. So it's really cool that this flight happened, and it's just, just fantastic news for relations between these two countries, as maybe it can hopefully lead towards a more peaceful Middle East. So with all that being said, we are moving on to fleet news, and there is some interesting fleet news for this week. We have the Avianca 77-9. This was actually requested by, I believe it was Infinite Flight 777-9X asked uh, for an update on the Avianca 779. I don't know if I've ever covered this before on Aviation News this week, but uh, this picture here was taken on May 11th, 2018. And this was their first 787-9 registered November 797 Alpha Victor. This was to be the first 787-9 and I do believe it was delivered to the airline. However, due to the pandemic and some other circumstances of some financial issues that Avianca is going through, uh, the aircraft never went into service and as far as I know the aircraft is still in storage. So it will be interesting to see what happens. Hopefully they do eventually get this and Avianca should survive. Don't worry, they're not going bankrupt the kind of gone gone bankruptcy, they are in the restructuring kind of bankruptcy. So next up on June the 1st, this picture was taken on Planespotters.net. Yes, this is the very first time I'm using Planespotters.net because there was an aircraft here that I saw uh, that uh, the two main sites that usually use Jet Photos and Airliners Net didn't have covered. And this is the very first SAS A321neo. This is specifically an SAS A321-253NX. Uh, it's a Neo, and I believe it's a slightly longer range and different configuration A321. You can tell because of the door arrangement. On the normal A321, it would have eight large emergency doors, but on the NX and then on the um, um, the ultra long range A321 that's going to come out in a couple of years, they only have six large emergency doors, four smaller ones over the uh, wings. So that's how you can tell that it's the. Uh, um, NX version. So anyway, this aircraft wears the test registration of Delta Dash Alpha Victor Zulu Alpha, and it will be delivered as Sierra Echo Dash Delta Mike Oscar. And next up, we have a couple of news items that happened on the 29th of August 2020. And first off, here we have a Russian Air Force Sukhoi Su-35S. Which stored 51 blues is in a new special demonstrator scheme and this is used by the Russian Air Force for demonstrations and I do think their scheme with the blue, red, and white is quite unique and I like it. But uh, apparently this is a new version in that paint scheme or something like that. Anyway, it's pretty cool. And then uh, also on the same day, a uh, new aircraft for Link Airways appeared and uh, this aircraft is apparently a new livery for Link Airways. They have like this new livery thing. Um, I, I'm not very familiar with Link Airways, but they're an Australian airline. I've seen them in a couple of videos like HD Melbourne Aviation and such. Uh, this aircraft is registered Victor Hotel Das Victor Echo Foxtrot, and it is a Saab 340B. Plus. There aren't too many of these Saabs left in service, but it is cool to see them in operation because, I mean, I like them, and, uh, you know, it's so sad that US Airlines have retired them, but there are still a few Airlines flying them, such as this one right here. Uh, next up, we have uh, Peach Airways, very first A320neo. This aircraft wears the test registration of Foxtrot Dash Whiskey Whiskey Victor Juliet and will be delivered as Juliet Alpha 201 Papa. This is an A320-251N, and um, really cool aircraft. It'll be Peach Airlines, if I'm correct, a Japanese discount airline. I'm not very familiar with them, but I have heard a couple things about them. Uh, the livery is quite unique. I'll give them that. It's very unique livery, and it's, it's kind of cool because I like that. It's different than you know normal liveries. But anyway, cool to see that they got their first A320. This was taken on the third of September, 2020, in Toulouse. Air China has a new special for one of their Boeing 
2800. This is to uh, advertise the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games. Apparently, Beijing will be hosting at least part, if not all, of the Winter Olympics. So it's really cool. This is a special way to promote that. This aircraft wears the registration Bravo 5425. This picture was taken in Beijing. And this uh, aircraft is caught on the 5th of September 2020. Also caught on the same day, 5th of September, we have this United States Air Force F-16 CM Fighting Falcon in a new special demonstrator scheme. Uh, apparently it sells off some sort of new skin technology. It's called Over the River. It's a really cool livery. I really like it. And this aircraft is registered as 94-0047. That is it for the fleet news and then we'll move on to route news. Okay, for route news, we have this article here by One Mile at a Time. It is covering the brand new American Airlines winter routes. They'll be starting later this year in many cases, and then they are scheduled to go through uh, the end of 2020 and into early 2021. So these are routes that will stay around for a while. There's some very interesting routes in here. I will include the article down below if you want to read the entire thing. But we're just going to get started right away with these routes. For American, this is starting a new trend for airlines to start winter, kind of summer, like beach and vacation routes. And I'm going to cover American this week, and the next week we're going to cover some other airlines. But um, here we have some of the routes. So from Cancun, American will be starting service to Cancun from Columbus, Ohio, and that's on the 1819 Saturday only. From Indianapolis, 738, Saturday only. Kansas City, 738, Saturday only. RDU, Raleigh Dome, 738, Saturday only. And St. Louis, Saturday only on the 737-800. So these are really cool routes. Um, I think it's really cool these get routes because particularly these airports have been growing a lot as of late. So it's really cool to see if they get their own Mexico routes. And then also, Cabo St. Lucas will be getting some flights from Austin, 738, Saturdays only, New York JFK, 738 Saturday only, and Sacramento, 8319 Saturday only. Well, the New York JFK could be daily, so up to daily bit. And then they will also be doing Port Valara to Solid Douglas on the 8319 Saturday only. You can see a map of that right here. Anyway, this will be really interesting. You can see the map here. Uh, really interesting services that America is doing, but that's not it. Miami will be adding a lot of routes, and um, they will include Dayton. E-145 Saturdays only, Lexington, E-145 Saturdays only, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, E-175 Saturdays only, I'm kind of surprised it isn't daily, uh, Portland, Maine, uh, E-175 Saturday only, and Rochester in New York, E-175 Saturdays only. So these are really interesting, as uh, I don't think these cities have ever had Miami sauce, so it's really interesting for them to add that sauce, and uh, yeah, it should be a nice addition, because a lot of us in the north, when it gets really cold outside, we do like to head down to the south. It's kind of a trend. And then there will be a lot of new Phoenix Sky Harbor Star starting. So here we have Billings, which is in Montana. That will be CRJ 700 daily. Uh, Bismarck, CRJ 700. That will be daily. Although CRJ 700 services uh, should be um, on, uh, on Voyeur. Uh, Calgary, yeah, CRJ 900. That will be in Canada. Uh, that should be the daily CRJ 900 should be on Mesa. Cincinnati, 8319, four times weekly. Uh, Cleveland, 737-800, Saturdays only apparently. I'm, I'm kind of surprised I'm doing Saturdays only to Cleveland. Um, Nashville, 8319, four times weekly. Pittsburgh, 8319, daily. So uh, why are they doing Pittsburgh daily but not Cleveland? That doesn't make sense. Anyway, Raleigh Dome, 8320 daily. Pretty awesome. I mean, I do like Raleigh. And then Tulsa, CRJ900, that will be daily as well, also on Mesaba. So that is it. A lot of really interesting services here. Um, really interesting to see American operate these new services that they really haven't done before. And I think it will be a great way for them to expand. And uh, it is just on the new trend that airlines are going away from business routes because a lot of business traffic has entirely dried up because of the pandemic. And so they're going to more vacation routes instead. So this is a new market trend. We'll see how long this market trend lasts. But it could provide a new shift in the market. So with that being said, I just thought I might show you guys some pictures. Um, here's some pictures of the butterfly. 
might have seen uh, the last couple of weeks I'm doing the uh, episode of the butterfly that's been going from the caterpillar and then to his cocoon. Well, here's some pictures of him in a cocoon just before hatching. And then I have a couple pictures of him just as he hatched out of the cocoon. Sadly, I did not get him as he flew away as he always spread his wings fully because I was eating a little bit. And then when I finished eating my meal, came out and he was already gone. So that's really sad, but it was super cool to see the process of going from caterpillar, latching onto the wall, turning into a uh, cocoon, and then hatching out. I thought that was super awesome, super cool to see nature doing its thing. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, so don't forget to submit your aviation photos in the email below. And have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching, and God bless you.